there's something reassuring about a familiar story. Now, this could be any number of things. For me, it's when I get home from church on Sunday, have lunch, and start watching The Mummy with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz. It is just, it's objectively not a good movie, but it's just something that I enjoy. And it's a great way to relax on a Sunday afternoon when you just, you know everything that's going to happen. There's no surprises when I watch The Mummy. There's also no surprises when I watch The Mummy Returns, which of course always you have to watch the sequel if you start watching the first, but you never watch the third Mummy movie. That one's just terrible. And I've got a couple things that I like to read like that or like to watch like that. Uh, about once a year, I, there's a couple books that I just have to read every year because they're familiar. Or a movie like Jurassic Park, which I also watch all the time because who doesn't love dinosaurs, right? But the thing about these movies is if you start watching at the beginning and then you, say, accidentally fall asleep in the middle and wake up for the end, it's not near as enjoyable. A goofy movie, sure, it's fun if you just watch the first little bit and you hear you know, the first song and then you fall asleep in the middle and then you catch the last song. It's fine, but you miss everything that happens in the middle. Because when it comes to movies and books and the stories that we tell, the middle is important. When it comes to Holy Week and Jesus' passion, it's easy for us to tell ourselves to skip the middle, to go straight from the triumphal entry where Jesus comes into Jerusalem and is hailed as king and then just fast forward straight to the resurrection. It's easy for us to want to do that. We go from happy note to happy note and we feel really good. But just like Jurassic Park isn't as much fun if the velociraptors don't learn how to open doors, Easter doesn't mean as much if you skip Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. This is probably the story that we are most familiar with after all. We know that when Jesus comes into town, he rides in on a colt, he's celebrated by the people. But then by Thursday, we know that Judas betrays him, that he is arrested and bound. And then by Friday, the people are crying out, crucify him, where they once shouted, Hosanna. We know that Jesus' trials were probably not the most exactly legal thing in the world. We know that Pilate succumbed to the will of the people even when he knew that Jesus was an innocent man. And we've heard these words of Jesus, it is finished. And we know that Jesus dies and is buried. It's a familiar story. But just like when you watch a romantic comedy, you know that the headlining couple's gonna get together in the end. The familiarity of knowing that the resurrection will happen colors how we view these days. Because we know that even though Jesus dies and is buried, we know that he doesn't stay dead. but we can't skip the middle. We can't fast forward through the parts that make us uncomfortable because they are part of the story. We can't skip Jesus telling his disciples, you, Judas, will betray me. You, Peter, will deny me. Him chastising the disciples for falling asleep the moment when he most needed them to be there for him. Every good story needs a moment of uncertainty. And the real life story of Jesus' last three days on earth is filled 
with uncertainty. Jesus' disciples going into watching Jesus' trial and ultimately his crucifixion, they knew that that wasn't something that people came back from. Crucifixions were meant to make a statement. Don't do what that guy did. And so by the end of Friday, his disciples were terrified. They didn't know the future. And just like when watching a familiar movie, you still feel a bit of that tension. We need to live in the uncertainty that these three days give us. Yes, we know that Easter is around the corner, but we can sit with the disciples at the foot of the cross on Friday, hearing the words of Jesus, seeing him on the cross, and knowing that he is there out of love for us. We can wait with the disciples on Holy Saturday and sit not knowing, feeling the weight of the one who we thought who would save us being gone. And to feel that pain, because when we feel that, when we have that moment of tension in the middle, how much greater is it when everything gets resolved? If you're a musician, you know that there's certain chords that are supposed to go somewhere. If you sit on one chord, it just feels uncomfortable. You want it to go anywhere. And sometimes music doesn't do that. It'll end on a four, and it just makes everyone a little bit uncomfortable. And it's that tension that we feel. It's that tension that these days give us. But when we live there, when we accept that tension, we, we accept the pain of Jesus' death, there's a resurrection around the corner. And it makes that resurrection greater. Because when we live in the drama of Holy Week, when we experience the loss, the pain, the knowledge that Christ suffered for us, it makes his victory so much more. It makes his rising again so much more because we felt the sin that he paid for. We have felt the death that will become life. And we feel the depth and breadth of God's love that he would go to a cross for us. May we feel the tension in these next few days so that when we reach that Easter morning, we feel so much more the joy of the resurrection.